Busting the Myth deals with fatigue. If you get a normal amount of sleep yet you're still fatigued, does this really mean you're depressed? Well, Joe is here to debunk that myth. Sure, this is one of the most common things that happen and not only in a psychiatrist's office, but even in a doctor's office. A lot of um, uh, barbiturates are, are uh, prescribed wow. for this, as, really? as well as benzodiazepine, like uh, Xanax depressed. and so on, because they think they're depressed. Yeah. So the myth, consistent fatigue with normal amounts of sleep means you're depressed, debunking the myth. While depression is possible when you sleep well and still have, have persistent fatigue, allergies, both food and environmental, mm -hmm. unstable glucose, lack of exercise, and overconsumption of refined foods is just as often mm -hmm. the cause. And we're gonna learn so much more about this, we're not gonna actually spend a lot of time on this, it's just kind of a tease into what we're gonna be talking about today because I know Different. that there are a tremendous amount of viewers out there who suffer with fatigue and are just not getting help uh, from the medical community. And we're not saying it's the medical community's fault, but yeah. these people and, are suffering. And fatigue, all. in many cases, uh, or depression, I should say, is emotional fatigue. It's not necessarily physical fatigue. Correct. You know, depression is more emotional fatigue or some other things going on. So I think the point is well taken. You don't jump to the conclusion that you're depressed just because you're tired all the right. time. And so. the million dollar question is which came first, the depression or the fatigue? Right. I, you know, I went through chronic fatigue syndrome, but started my journey to health. Right. And um, that's what they, they used to say, are you depressed? I'm like, yeah, I feel terrible. I'm, the, I'm really depressed about feeling terrible. So I'm depressed because I can't function, right? I'm depressed because yeah. I can't function. Well, you know, Shirley, we take uh, email questions and, and things from our viewers, and we have an email from Josh in California. He says, I was diagnosed with diabetes at nine years old. Now, there are times when I think I'm doing really well with my blood sugar, I eat well and I exercise, but sometimes my monitor reads all over the place. Do you have any advice? Well. Dr. Walton Laramore does, he's a resident MD. Let's ask Dr. Laramore what he has to say about this. Well, I have patients just like you that despite taking their medication regularly, being compliant to their diet and exercising frequently will just have times where their blood sugars seem to be up and down and all over the place. Now, we can see this in times of stress or times of turmoil, but sometimes there's no obvious cause at all. Well, there's three things I like to tell my patients in this particular situation. Number one, is God trying to tell you something? Is this time of turmoil something that's happening subconsciously? And so talking to family members or a pastoral professional to see, is there something going on subconsciously that I need to deal with? Number two, the blood sugars going up and down aren't necessarily harmful as long as you're not having any symptoms of hypoglycemia. And number three, as long as your average blood sugar is normal, you're probably okay. How do you best test that? Well, it's not just by taking your blood sugar readings and averaging them, but rather it's with a blood test called the glycohemoglobin test. It's also called hemoglobin A1C. That's a blood test that will measure your average blood sugar for the previous two or three months. And I recommend that diabetics have that test every three months. I think it's one of the best ways to monitor your diabetes control and answer the question, do I need to change my diet, my exercise, or my medications? Well, that's very good information. And um, you know, it's, it's sad because I know I've seen my little granddaughter, her blood sugar will be all over and she's doing everything right. And so, you know, it's a little discouraging. But. Isn't it amazing though, that there's a blood test that can give you your average blood sugar reading for the previous three oh, months. I know. I wonder if anybody can take that. I'd like to, you know, take oh, that. Oh no! I, I think um, depending on your insurance policy, um, some of the better insurance companies are actually paying for that. Net test is being is, is given more and more often because they're now they keep lowering the standards for when they're calling you at least pre-diabetic. Right, they used exactly. to be 115, 110. Now right. 100, 105. Right. They're labeling you as pre-diabetic. So, so Jerry was 104, and they said he was borderline. And then you know, and after I said, Jerry, I wouldn't go on anything, mm -hmm. you know. And they and they're ready to put you on insulin right away. I'm like, there's no way. I said you need to exercise more, whatever. And he did. He he took care of it. But yeah, it's it, the the threshold is much lower now. Yeah, and I would take that test before I went on insulin medication. Right. I would take that test. Absolutely. Well, over the last few months, we've gotten emails questioning alternative therapies, and we talk about that a lot on this show. Well, Dr. Walt has something to say on the topic of aromatherapy. Are you ready for this? So let's go to Dr. Walt Laramore for today's, today's segment of Your Family's Health. The spray of perfume, a favorite food on the grill, or a bouquet of flowers. They all have distinct smells, but can certain pleasant aromas help cure an illness? There's a great use for aromatherapy for everybody. Aromatherapy is the use of the aromas from essential oils to attempt to improve your well-being. Plants contain certain compounds that are not water-soluble. 
These can be extracted and used as a massage oil or can be heated in order to fill the room with a scent. Some of the aromatherapies can be used for healing benefits also, whether it be fatigue, energy, menopause, even weight loss it can be helped for that. The fact is, little research has been done on the use of oils for therapeutic reasons. Aromatherapy, along with a massage from a caring provider, may feel good, but that doesn't make it a cure for illness. Aromatherapy oils are generally safe, but they may produce allergic reactions and should never be taken internally and they should always be kept away from children. I'm Dr. Walt Laramore. Well, I certainly like uh, fragrant candles and <laughs> bath oils. I mean, they, they work on you emotionally. I think they relax you. And, and you know, if that's the case, go for it. Uh, I think, though, for somebody, there's so many people out there, Shirley, that are suffering physically, that are suffering emotionally. They're looking for answers. Sure. They've hit a couple of uh, uh, blanks, you know, and so they start going further and they run into an iridologist who tells them that they're going to be able to cure them by looking in their eyeball. They run into yeah. an aromatherapist. Uh, quite frankly, that gentleman that was being interviewed there I thought was very much overestimating yeah. uh, the ability of aromatherapy yeah, as a about healing menopause mechanism. menopause and everything else. It could yeah. be a tool in your tool chest of healing tools. I used to use that word yeah. too many times, excuse the redundancy. But um, to say that, you know, I'm doing this, I'm getting massages, I'm cutting back on my refined foods, I'm getting more exercises, I'm drinking more water, I'm getting sunshine, every, all those things, yes, you know, in that respect, could it help in healing? Yes, but is it at any point in time a primary healing tool? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on record as saying aromatherapy is never, ever a primary uh, healing tool. So, um, actually, I want to bring our guests on pretty soon here to, to talk about this chronic fatigue thing because it, it is so yes. huge and we've got some really... Uh, qualified people here today, both from the medical side of it and from the victim we side of it. Patient. And we yeah, have a patient. And we have a patient. So you know, appreciate her being here. Um, the past victim, I'll say, she's overcoming. Yes. So remember, for a copy of the show, call 888 242 9393. Coming up, as we promised, Dr. Morris Papernick, who is board certified in internal medicine, and Jane Barber are here to answer some questions about the debilitating effects of chronic fatigue syndrome and how you can overcome them. Stay tuned. <music>